Hello everyone, my name is Mohamed and welcome to this demo of DevOps GPT. As someone who's worked extensively with various DevOps tools like Traform, Kubernetes, Grafana, Docker, Ansible, and so on, I know how time consuming it can be to set up and configure everything from scratch. Okay, whether it's creating templates for infrastructure or automating deployment workflows, it can be a daunting task actually. Today, I'm excited to show you how DevOps GPT can help us streamline and automate many of these processes, making it easier to work with your favorite DevOps tools and get your application up and running faster. Uh, well, that's exactly where DevOps GPT comes in. DevOps GPT is designed to automate the creation of templates for DevOps tools and configurations, okay? So you don't have to start from scratch each time. With just a few clicks, you can generate complete templates for infrastructure, deployment, monitoring, and more, saving you hours of manual work. Instead of spending time configuring tools like Grafana, Kubernetes, Trawform, or Ansible, and so on, DevOps GPT uh, does the heavy lifting for you, okay? Allowing you to focus on what truly matters, deploying and scaling your application, actually. So now let's dive into how DevOps GPT can help solve these challenges, okay? Today we'll walk through different sections of this app. And to begin, we need to log into the app. The domain is panel.hubs.ai and you can easily access it through your browser. You can use various authentication providers to log in, such as Google or GitHub. And personally, I use GitHub as my provider, so I click on it. I enter my username and password. And I need an authentication code. So the authentication code is this. And I click on continue. And very good. This is the new interface of DevOps GPT. There are different sections in this app, such as chats, template generation, and installation instruction, okay? One of the most important section of this app is template generation. So I click on it, and as you can see here, many different tools are supported here. Trawform, Helm, Ansible, Docker Compose, CloudFormation, Plumi, GitHub Actions, Grafana, and HashiCorp Packer. Okay, so now let's talk about Ansible. Uh, as an example of this demo, okay? Ansible is one of the most powerful automation tools for managing infrastructure, okay? And DevOps GPT, we've made it super easy to automate the deployment and configuration of different tools such as Nginx, Docker, and Kubernetes. And for this demo, I want to talk about Kubernetes. And let me walk you through how we set it up. First off, you define the Ansible user and port. Whether you're um, using SSH, custom ports, or specific user accounts for connecting to your nodes. So I type root and the port is 1990. All of this is customizable directly throughout the DevOps GPT interface. Just input the required details and DevOps GPT generates the full Ansible playbook for you. Okay. Next, you will define the master and worker nodes. These are the heart of your Kubernetes cluster. Now, you can specify their IP address and host name, which will be used to configure your Ansible inventory, okay? This means you can easily manage your cluster's infrastructure by simply providing the details for your nodes, okay? For the master nodes, I type master node one, master node two and three. And for the worker nodes, I type at worker node one, worker node two and worker node three. Very good. And the version. Um, we know that Kubernetes evolves rapidly and it's essential to stay up to date. With DevOps GPT, you can specify the exact version of Kubernetes you wanna install whether it's um, the latest stable release or a specific version for compatibility, okay? You're in control. 
This is the most important thing. So for the version, I click on, uh, for example, 1.30, okay? And um, after filling in these details, DevOps GPT generates the entire Ansible playbook for you. So I click on Generate, and as the file has been downloaded, and its name is Kubernetes Ansible.zip. I open it, and this includes everything from installing Kubernetes to configure nodes and deploying Kubernetes components. For example, if I open hosts file, you can see the inventory based on the based on the inputs that we provided earlier. Okay. And also the roles required to install Kubernetes, setting up Kubernetes, configuring Kubernetes components, and so on. And if you wanna check the variables of this Ansible playbook, you can open group varus directory and the files here. All. These are all variables related to installing and setting up Kubernetes. Okay, very good. Um, the beauty of this, this is that once the playbook is generated, you can use Ansible to automatically apply these changes and these configurations across your nodes without manual intervention. Okay, this is so important. Very good. Um, so now let's talk about another template, such as Trawform and Grafana alerting as code. Uh, here, we may configuring Grafana and setting up alerting as code, okay? As DevOps engineers, we know how critical it is to manage our infrastructure with code, and Trawform allows us to do just that. In DevOps GPT, we've taken the complexity out of configuring Grafana alerts by providing an easy-to-use template. First, we'll start by creating a contact point, okay, where we define where the alerts should be sent, whether it's to email, Slack, or any other integrations. For example, for this demo, I want to use email instead of Slack, so I click on it, okay? Uh, next, we will design a message template here, okay? Uh, that controls how the alerts notifications will look, okay? Imagine being able to fully customize the format of each alert, including dynamic fields like alert severity or effective service without writing a single line of code, okay? And another option here is create muting time, okay? You can even define a muting time to temporarily silence alerts during maintenance window, okay? Uh, ensuring you won't be flooded with notifications when you're working on critical updates, okay? And to top it off, we'll set up a notification policy where you, where you can turn alerts on or off based on your node, based on your needs, uh, such as enabling notification only for critical issues, okay? And... Once you've provided the inputs, DevOps GPT takes care of the rest, generating the full template, full um, Trawform code, actually, okay? So I click on Generate, and the zip file has been downloaded, and its name is Grafana on the line alerting.zip. I click on Save, and I open it, okay? This is the, uh, the module related to Grafana alerting. And uh, actually, with just a few clicks, you will have a Grafana alerting setup ready to be deployed, saving you hours of manual configurations, okay? You can also easily customize and reconfigure uh, all variables of this module through trawform.tfrs. For example, changing uh, the configurations of each contact point or muting time or notification policy and so on if you want. Or also, you can define policies for your notification policy resource if you want, okay? Very good. So now let's dive deeper into another section of DevOps GPT, and uh, this is Grafana section here, okay? You will find a section here for alert rules, okay? This section is where you can configure alerts for various services. Each service has its own configuration, and for every service, DevOps GPT generates a corresponding YAM file containing the alert rules specific to the service. 
whether you're setting up alerts or Nginx, locate Kubernetes, or any other services, you will find a YAML file ready for each one, okay? For example, if you were working with Grafana alerting for MongoDB database, DevOps GPT will generate a MongoDB alert rule YAML that contain all the necessary configurations for alerting, okay? So, as an example, I click on services, I'm looking for MongoDB, I click on generate, a zip file has been downloaded, mongodb.zip. I click on save. I open it. And yeah, mongodb-exporter.yamp. And these are all alerts related to MongoDB database. Very good. The another section here is Lucky LuckyLuckQL. Let's take a quick look at it, which is used for log aggregation and querying, okay? In DevOps GPT, we provide two different types of templates to help you create your own LogQL queries, okay? As you can see here, we have did two different types of templates. The first one is LogQueries template. This template guides you on how to write LogQL queries to filter and retrieve logs from your applications, okay? And another one is metric queries template. This template helps you create LogQL queries for generating metrics from your logs. It will show you how to extract useful information from logs and turn them into metrics, which you can then use it uh, in Grafana for visualization, okay? Both templates include example queries and detailed instructions to help you understand the structure of LogQL and how to write your own queries, okay? By following these templates, you will be able to easily create tailored queries for your own Loki setup and um, allowing you to efficiently monitor logs and metrics in Grafana. Very good. Uh, and another section here is data sources. There is a feature to create a Grafana data source YAM file. In this section, you only need to provide the required information, such as the type of the data source, connecting details, and any authentication settings, okay? Once you've entered the necessary data, the app will automatically generate the corresponding YAML file for various data sources here, such as Alert Manager, Elasticsearch, Loki, Mimir, MySQL, Postgres, Prometheus, and Tempo data source. For this demo, I choose Mimir randomly, okay? You can specify the name, the UID, and the URL related to your Mimir instance. And if you want your data source, your Mimir data source, to be editable through a Grafana instance, you can enable it here. And also, you can specify the Alert Manager UID here. And if you want to use multi-tenancy for your Mimir instance, uh, you can enable it here and specify your tenant name here, okay? For example, the tenant name is DevOps GPT. Because I'm going to use the power of multi-tenancy for my Mimir data source here. I click on generate data source, and a zip file has been downloaded called Mimir.zip. I click on save, and I open it. The name of the file is mimir.yam. This is a yam file related to mimir data source. It has many different fields, such as name, UID, URL, editable. Uh, the JSON data includes uh, the header name called xscope orgid related to multi-tenancy, the alert manager UID, and also the tenant name. The tenant name that we provided earlier is DevOps GPT. Very good, it was about uh, Grafana data sources. Uh, okay, thank you very much for watching. I encourage you to try out this app, collaborate, and share your feedback. The app is updated every day, and in the next videos, I will explain more features of this app. Hope you like it, and see you soon.